Until the 20th century, the creation of the industrial scale chemical fertilizers, one of the major sources for fertilizer was guano, basically concentrated seabird or bat droppings. What is it that guano makes it such a good fertilizer? And why are they found such a high levels of waste from both birds and bats? We'll start with the reason that seabird and bats are the major source of guano is they nest or roost in huge numbers in caves or cliff faces, with that many animals being relatively undisturbed for decades in such a compact location, the amount of guano produced is huge. Once it's settled on the ground, any water still present evaporates, leaving behind the dried, concentrated product which has passed through the animal's digestive system. Key useful chemicals in guano are nitrates, phosphates and potassium. If we take the nitrates first, one of the waste products produced by many animals is something called uric acid normally diluted in many animals' urine. However, in birds and some other animals living in dry conditions or where fresh water is hard to come by, uric acid is excreted as a solid or near solid in the faeces rather than in the urine. This uric acid is often produced when the animals need to produce substantial amounts of energy when they have limited supplies of oxygen, like when they're running or flying at high speeds. Since it's also toxic, it needs to be excreted from the body preserve the animal's health. Another source of nitrates is a chemical called ammonia oxalate, which is produced as part of the metabolism of glycolic acid and absorbic acid, also known as vitamin C. Both these substances are present in the fruit diet of many bats. Ammonia oxalate can't be metabolized, so like the uric acid, it also gets excreted. The component is phosphates, which contain the enzyme phosphorus. Normally in the form of phosphoric acid, again is produced in large amounts by eating fish and seabirds, and to a lesser extent by the bats and other animals in their waste. Finally, we have potassium. Like the others, excess is excreted from birds in a semi solid form, which then dries and hardens. The concentration of useful minerals found in guano far exceeds that of other natural forms of fertilizer. However, as well as a fertilizer, it can also be used. The making of gunpowder. So, especially during the American Civil War, guano was a doubly important resource. Now, guano extraction was a huge business, with millions of tons of it being extracted, normally by people in very poor working conditions. If the use of slave labour, even the South American conflict was based upon it, America passed the Guano Islands Act, authorising Americans to seize any guano deposits that they found. Now, as guano sources were becoming depleted or difficult to extract, the 20th century saw industrial production of fertilizer take over from guano extraction. However, whilst nitrates and potassium, most of the other components can be fairly easily obtained, mineral resources and reserves of economically viable phosphorus are running low. But most soils do still contain enough phosphorus for plant growth. However, it needs to be in a form that the plants can use. Most soils are now too sterile to produce the specific phosphates. So, in the future, if phosphates do become scarce, we may need to focus on the health of the soil as much as the health of the plants growing in the soil. By increasing the amount of organic matter in the soil, ensure they have access to the phosphates they need for growth.